Hi and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. Uh, what I'm going to be presenting today is my latest design for a two-speed automatic gearbox based on a worm gear torque detection method. Uh, this is very much a prototype, it does work well but there are some shortcomings that I'd like to present and explain to you. So the idea for this particular gearbox came about from studying different methods for detecting torque on the output and now of course that's necessary in order to drive a gear change so as it's loading on the output you want some mechanism by which you can detect that and drive a change in the gearing ratio. So one way of doing that uh, that I've presented in the past was using a differential on the output like this. So as there is force on the output that differential starts to rotate and that rotation can drive another mechanism that can create a uh, gear change. So for example in this case using a rotary catch and that rotary catch can then drive that change in the gears so that is using a differential for torque detection another method that I've used is just simply the force on the gears themselves so here we've got a small gear and that's attached to this lift arm and as there is some loading on the output that force on that gear normally it would just rotate like this but as soon as you block the output it will force that movement in the lift arm and create a change in gearing by shifting that gear from one position to another which around the back we've got another one and that will drive that gear change from one speed to another so that's using the force on the gear itself for torque detection uh, another method I've presented is this one here whereby I'm using a structure that's very similar to a differential to detect the torque and as we drive the input like this it just rotates the output but as soon as we put some loading on the output it will start to put loading on that differential type structure that then moves and starts driving a secondary gear that creates a second output speed. So those are the three possible techniques I've used in the past that I've presented. So the method I'm going to be presenting today for torque detection is to use the simple worm gear. So a worm gear is a mechanism that you're all probably familiar with as you rotate the worm gear like this. It kind of creates this linear motion in that direction and puts a linear force on the teeth of the gear that is driving and that gear starts to rotate. So as you can see it rotates like this. Now what happens if I put some loading on that gear? It actually also creates a counter force in the opposite direction uh, to the worm gear. So if I hold that output tightly enough that worm actually wants to move in this direction as I rotate it or the other direction as I rotate it the other way. And that's the method I've used for the uh, torque detection by actually putting that worm in a small housing that's movable. So what I've created here is a similar mechanism. We've kind of got this movable housing and that worm gear is driving this output and we've got the input here. So as we rotate that input like this we can see the output rotating but as soon as we put some loading on the output it in fact starts pushing forward the housing that the worm gear is uh, mounted in. So this was the prototype for that idea and then I expand on that prototype to create the fully fledged two speed automatic gearbox. So it's pretty much got the same setup so underneath we can see we've got that housing that can move. Uh, that housing is held back by a pair of rubber bands at the top here just to pull that back when the uh, loading on the output is reduced. As that housing moves across we can see this gear here, the 20 tooth, will then engage with this 12 tooth at the top to create the second gear. So when we're in first gear it's disengaged Then, as there's loaded on the output this will move across and engage another gear. Now one of the interesting gears that has been used in this particular mechanism is the red eight tooth gear. This is a very special gear that is actually quite rare and appears I think in about five different sets. It was first introduced uh, in a major way in the Mark II mobile crane set. Uh, and what's special about this particular gear, it's got no friction and what it can do, we can move the axle through that gear without the, uh, without the friction holding it back and that means we can keep driving that axle and still have the axle move within the gear itself. Alright, so I'll just give you a demonstration of this gearbox in action. I've got the motor connected to the battery pack, we'll just turn it on now. You can see the output's being driven through the motor which then drives the main axle here that drives the worm. The worm then drives the 28 tooth, comes around here, goes through the differential and comes out through the output. You can see the differential is not rotating, the differential is used to add up the main path and the secondary path once that other gear is engaged. So as soon as we put some loading on that output gear, we can see that housing starts to move forward like that. You can see it from this side, that housing starts to move and once it moves far enough it engages the second gear 
and we can see we now have a slowdown in the overall speed of the output. That's the fast speed, and this is the slow speed. Now there's obviously a very major issue with the difficulty gearbox, and that's simply the speed of uh, gear change. We can see that the housing is actually very slow to move, and that's something that kind of caught me by surprise. I thought being connected directly to the motor, the, the motor's got a high RPM, about 380 rotations per minute. I thought uh, you know, that mechanism would pretty much shoot forward, but no, it doesn't. It actually goes very slowly. And I found that very interesting. I mean, the mechanism does work, but ultimately I guess that is a, a major drawback. You can see that the output pretty much stops before switching to a secondary gear. So why does the gear change mechanism move so slowly? Well, one reason is I didn't actually calculate the speed that it would move at. I just sort of assumed it would go quite quickly because it connected directly to the motor. But if you actually do the calculation by measuring the spacing of the worm gear thread, so for example, if we measure across, say, about four of them, uh, it's about 12 millimeters. So each thread is spaced at about three millimeters. So that means if the motor is going at 380 RPM, which are the revolutions per minute, then per second, be about 6.33, and if each of those moves three millimeters at a time, then it's about 19 millimeters per second um, movement in that gear housing. So if we need to move about eight millimeters, which is a Lego Technic spacing, that would mean it takes about 0.42 per second to move uh, eight millimeters, which is one unit. So the calculation tells me that it should take 0.42 of a second for that gear change mechanism to move all the way across. However, in practice, it does seem to take longer. And there is a reason for that as well, is that what happens is that when I slow down the output or stop the output, the uh, second gear gets engaged quite quickly, and that actually drives that differential backwards and rotates that gear that's connected to the worm gear backwards as well, slowing down the movement of that uh, gear change mechanism. So the overall speed is actually a lot less than what the calculation would suggest. Probably other reasons as well, like the battery pack may not be fully charged. There's loading on the motor, so that means it doesn't go at the full 380 uh, revolutions per minute either. So those are some of the reasons why it's a lot slower than I expected. So I did try to improve the speed of that gear change mechanism by changing the design of this gearbox slightly. and ended up building a different version, uh, this version. It's pretty much the same thing, but all I've done is increase the speed of the motor. I've added a 3 to 1 gearing onto the input axle so that the overall speed of the mechanism is three times faster. And I've also added a half spacing bush here uh, in the gear change mechanism so that it doesn't need to move quite as far. It needs to move half a Lego unit rather than a full unit to engage the gears. Uh, and that does improve the transition speed a little bit. I'll just show you how that works. So now it's going three times faster so as we slow down the uh, output uh, it's a much faster transition however this introduces other issues uh, in terms of the amount of output torque there's not a whole lot of output torque on the output and of course that can be changed with a different gearing design mechanism but overall uh, i think the worm gear has got some potential as a torque detection method However, it does have some drawbacks in terms of its speed, but uh, it's the sort of thing that could be mitigated with the right design. It's still, like I said, it's a prototype and a work in progress. Hopefully in the future I can demonstrate another version that is much improved. So hopefully you got something out of this. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.